So I wanna do a traditional unboxing because this is a product that I've seen for a while, the Mic Me, but I've never actually looked at it on my channel. But it's been a popular option for mobile video, mobile filmmakers, mobile audio for several years, and they have created a new version. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun, and today's episode is brought to you by me. If you're new to mobile audio production, check out my course, The Complete Guide to Smartphone Audio Production. It's a great beginner's course covering everything from podcasting to voiceovers to on-set video production. So if you're interested, please check it out. Link is in the description. So we got a microphone, a transmitter all in one, I believe here. Wow, they provide some candy, that's nice. Looks like a charging cable. It's USB and it's micro USB or mini on this end, which I don't love. I wish that was USB-C. And then this looks like a lavalier mic. And so that's nice, they do provide a lav mic. So let's take a look at this receiver. This is pretty big. It's a nice size. And I assume this goes on your belt. Again, I've never used this, but what they also sent me is another lavalier mic and they call this the Lavalier Pro. I got this box sealed pretty good here. Guess I don't want you to get into this. <laughs> Looks like the same thing. Maybe they just sent me an extra. Although it appears there's some additional stuff in this bag. Maybe the pro version has more accessories. But one thing I can see right away that's interesting is this has mini XLR on it. That is nice. Yeah, there's a mini XLR plug right here in the receiver itself. And so that is a much more robust and better plug-in than the traditional mini plugs you often see in lower cost type microphones like Rode or Hollyland or Comica, et cetera. And so it is nice to see the mini XLR and that probably sets this apart among other things. All right, I am driving out by a lake. I've got a GoPro on my hood and I'm recording into the mic me in my car. This is a way that I often do double system sound and that's what this would be called because I'm not actually recording into the camera. I'm recording into the recorder only and I will sync it in post-production. And this is interesting because in this situation, I actually am not getting reference sound. And so what I did was I clapped at the beginning. So I'll have a visual cue in the GoPro and then the audio cue, the sound in the actual mic me pocket and that way I will sync it in post-production. To charge the mic me, you first need to loop the cable through this ferrite bead. I'd actually never done this before, but it's nice that they include it. The ferrite bead suppresses high frequency electronic noise in your cable. Once plugged in, the mic me will start charging immediately. The LED light will turn orange. And when it's done charging, it will turn off. A full charge takes about five hours, but this can depend on the charging adapter that you're using. And on a full charge, the Mic Me Pocket should last about three and a half hours. All right, audio test number two. I'm out by my pool, which if you've seen any of my other mic reviews, I usually come here and see how they sound against the pool water, the woods, the bugs, the air conditioning unit over there. And so I'm using the Mic Me attached to my waist and I've got the Lavalier Pro and I'm using my Sony A6400 about 30-ish feet away, maybe 40 feet away. And I'm doing double system sound again. So I clapped at the beginning and I'll sync this up in post-production. So this is primarily what I would call a field recorder and the main way to use it is by simply powering it on And now you're ready to roll. And all you gotta do, if this mic was attached to my shirt, is hit this button. It's red, and now it is recording. And so it has internal memory, and it's recording directly to the mic me. That's it. Super simple, when you're done, hit that, 
and you have a recording on the actual storage within the MicMe. And to get the files off the MicMe pocket, you connect it to the computer using the included cable, and then it will come up on your desktop just like a drive. That way you can easily save them to your computer for editing or sharing, whatever you need to do with the files. And one last thing I want to show that I really do like is it has a headphone jack built in. And so everything that you are recording, you can monitor with headphones or you could listen to them back on location using the headphones. And so that's a really nice feature a lot of other products in this category don't offer. The other way to record, and it's very similar, of course, to just using the Mic Me Pocket, is pairing it with your phone. One thing I want to stress, though, is you do not have to pair it with your phone. This works as a standalone device, and that's really probably the way I would use it more often. You can record in audio mode, or you can record in video, and so you can shoot video with this app. And for short social media kind of stuff, maybe that would be a good way to go. If you follow my channel, you know that I don't like using apps that, for lack of a better word, aren't as professional. This app has a lot of good features, but it's not like shooting with Filmic Pro. So what I would do more times than not, if you wanted to use your phone, and by the way, using your phone when you're doing it in the audio mode is more or less just getting a backup, or this could be your main recording, and then the backup will be recorded to this. Because remember, audio is always recorded to the internal storage on the Mic Me Pocket. Right now, when it's blue like this, that means it's connected via Bluetooth. And so this is connected to your phone and it's a really simple process to set up. Mic Me has tutorials on their website and I'll put a link in the description for you to check those out. And so what you would do is you would simply record a track. I'm recording now. You can see the waveform going on the bottom there. And if you peek, hello, you get red, you get little red marks there, meaning that you've peaked and that's it. And so it's recording here and now it's recording to your phone. And then when it's done, it says you can take a picture. And so you could take a picture of the location you're shooting in or the talent or whatever, or you can just save it without a picture. That's what I'm gonna do. And then at that point, all you have to do is go into your library and then here are your clips. And then you can choose the one I just recorded. Recording now. You can see the waveform going on the bottom. And you can play it back and you can see your, again, your waveform. And you have a few controls here. You could go in and you could trim it. And there's even some actual effects where you could go in and do different EQ effects that are built in. Personally, I wouldn't really ever use those. I like to record clean audio and then mess with that in post-production. But if you were doing something for social media, this might come in handy. So now I'm going to demonstrate using this to record a voiceover. So no video component. I've got the mic me, I've got the mic here, and I've got the app open. And so I'm going to hit record. I'm recording to both. Hey guys, this is Blake Calhoun testing out the mic me pocket. This is a voiceover. And in post-production, I am actually going to add some post-processing to make this sound as good as I can. I'm recording this inside in a sort of sound dead location in my studio. It's not like a full-on audio studio, but it is sound deadened to a degree. And so this is what the Mic Me sounds like, and I'm using the Lavalier Pro. And so right now what you're seeing is it's actually syncing the audio from the mic me to the phone. And that is the key point. It doesn't actually record to the phone. It syncs it once you save it. So just to be clear about that, it's not actually streaming audio or sending audio from the device to your phone like a traditional wireless mic. And then one other thing I wanna show, before you actually record, you can go in here and you can set the levels. So when it turns yellow on here, that means you're in manual mode and you can adjust the gain. Check, check, check. Check one, two, three. Or you can go in and put in an auto gain. Now it turned purple over here and it's purple here. And so now the device is controlling the gain automatically. And you can also control this with just the mic me if you don't have your phone and the app with you. Press and hold the button and it turns yellow. Then you use the plus and minus buttons on the bottom to raise and lower the gain. These also control the headphone volume. 
And to set this, it would probably be best to be wearing headphones. Or if you just want to use auto gain, which in my testing works pretty well, you just click it again, it turns purple, or maybe that's pink, I don't know. And now you're using auto gain. All right, the final audio test here. I'm about 40 feet away and I'm using the actual Mic Me video app on my iPhone right now. And so I'm using the Mic Me Pocket and I have the wireless set up here on me and it's recording to the actual Mic Me and then it will sync to the app once I'm done recording. And so this is one way to use it as a pseudo wireless mic setup if you want to stay mobile and use their app. The other thing you use the app for, or you can, is the various settings. So you can set the input gain in here if you want. You can set the headphone level. You can turn auto gain on. You've got a power save mode to determine when the device automatically turns off to save battery, or maybe it never does. And then the one really big one is the quality. I've got it set for 48K uncompressed. You could do 96K uncompressed. That is what a lot of professional audio guys on film sets will record to. For everyday kind of stuff, YouTube, whatever, 48K uncompressed is fine. You could also do 44.1, and you could even do compressed, the M4A format. I wouldn't do that personally, but for some people doing run and gun social media kind of stuff, that gives you more storage space on the actual mic me. So that might be an option, but for me, for everyday kind of stuff, I'm recording 48K broadcast waves and uncompressed. Well, what do I like about the mic me? Well, the high quality audio you can get out of it. 24 bit 96K recording is great. I also like the Lavalier Pro, that is a good mic. A really big one is how easy it is to use. It is very simple to use. The build quality is good too, it's professional grade and it'll handle the wear and tear. I really like the mini XLR connector, more robust and more professional connection and it will easily work with larger professional XLR mics using an adapter cable. And I really like using it as a field recorder. It's very good at doing double system audio, double system sound for production. All right, well, what do I not like? This may seem like a small thing, but the micro USB is a big drawback for me, especially in 2021. This should really be USB-C, considering you have to connect it and disconnect it to your computer quite a bit to download files. And of course, that's the way you charge it too. Setting the audio levels without the app is not really very precise, and even with the app, it's pretty clunky. I really wish there were audio meters on the actual mic me, not just in the app especially since it works so well as a standalone field recorder. Speaking of that, the recorder's battery life is not great. Three and a half hours is not really enough to do a full day shoot, and then it takes five hours to charge back up. Oh, and they say do not use it to record while it's charging. While I like the app and think it's well designed, for me, for video, it doesn't work. I need more manual control and higher quality. I also wish the MicMe would work as a Bluetooth mic in another app like Filmic Pro. I actually thought it would before I used it. It was a little bit confusing to me. So who is this for? Well, I wanted to compare this to the Rode Wireless Go 2 mics. That's what it kind of felt like in my head. But in reality, that's not really a very fair comparison because this is not a wireless mic. It's a hybrid. It will act like a wireless mic, but it syncs with Bluetooth. And so it doesn't actually record audio into a camera like a traditional camera. It's really a field recorder, and so it would be better compared to a zoom recorder, like maybe the F2, the Bluetooth version of the F2 zoom recorder. So really it's a hybrid of sorts, and I think it works better as a field recorder, but again, it is a quasi wireless mic if you use their app. So that might appeal to mobile journalists or social media producers, but really from a field recorder perspective, I think it could appeal to filmmakers doing Foley, or doing pickup audio, or maybe doing location type audio or narration, because the quality really is there. It's a professional sounding system, but it's not for people looking to use this primarily as a wireless mic system. That is not a good use for the mic me. In particular, if you're using traditional cameras, if you're only using smartphones, again, it works fine with their app. So overall, I do like the mic me, especially now that I understand how it should be used. And for me, it's really more of a field recorder. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.